Hi everyone, myself Murugan. Happy to present another interesting video from Excess. In this video, I'll be talking about a very simple trick to find a high growth companies at a low valuation. Yes, of course, as a long term investor, we are concerned about two major factors. One is about the earning potential of the company. The other one is about the pricing, at what price I'm getting in. This really decides your wealth maximization. And in this particular video, we'll talk about both the aspects. But in order to make you understand, we first need to make you understand the concept of relative valuation. We're going to take a price to equity as a benchmark to do it. The second one is about the growth potential, especially about the earnings growth. So don't worry about it. We'll make sure that even a beginner can easily understand out of it. So let's straight get into the topic. Although this is not a dedicated video to talk about PE ratio, we're going to explain PE ratio in one line so that you can easily understand it. And then we go to the core content of the video. So let's say there are three companies, company A, company B, and company C. And these companies are valued at a different price. Let's say the company A market capitalization is 10,000 crores, whereas company B is valued at 6,000 crores, and company C is valued at 18,000 crores. By looking at it, if I ask you, which company is overvalued and which company is undervalued? It's unfair to ask this question because the information provided to you is very limited. So you can't come to a conclusion by looking at a mere capitalization. But sometimes a most obvious answer from uh, many amateurs is they feel 18,000 crores is overvalued and 6,000 crores is undervalued. They, gen they generally, by looking at the value of the company to say overvalued and undervalued, which is not fair, I hope you understand. Because if you look at the company A earnings on a yearly, it makes 1,000 crores. So it is valued 10 times of its earnings. Whereas if you look at the company B, it earns only 500 crores. So in line with company A, which is 10 times, it should deserve only 5,000 crores. Whereas that company is actually getting 6,000 crores. The people are willing to pay more than 5,000 crores. So naturally, company B seems to be overvalued by considering the earning potential of the company. So I hope you understand the company B seems to be overvalued by keeping a company A in the benchmark list. So that's why we call this as a relative valuation. And if you look at the company C, the earnings is 2,000 crores. So naturally, it deserves 20,000 crores if you keep a company A into the benchmark. But this is actually getting only 18,000 crores. So uh, mere earnings will not tell us it's a good company or overvalued or undervalued. Mere capitalization may not tell us. So we need a combination factor. That's what called as a PE ratio. I hope you understand what is PE ratio. The PE ratio stands for the price to earnings. I mean. The company A is getting 10x as a value for its earnings. Whereas if you look at company B, it's getting 12x for its earnings because it, it earns only 500 crores. But the traders and the investors are willing to see the shares at 6,000 crores valuation. So they, they are actually uh, paying more in order to get this company. And if you look at the company C is actually getting undervalued. So by looking at one line, the PE ratio, we can say which is overvalued and which is undervalued. So just to conclude it, company C is undervalued because it is getting only 9x and company A is actually getting 10x, which is, seems to be fairly valued now. But company B is overvalued because it is actually getting 12x. So lower the PE ratio, attractive it becomes. Although this is not a video about PE ratio, so I may actually go in detail. But if you still have a doubt about PE ratio, definitely you mark your questions in the below comment section or you can actually browse our other videos. You can find a dedicated video for the PE ratios in our video list and uh, more descriptive videos will also be posted going forward. But the point you need to understand is what exactly PE ratio means to me as an investor. Try to understand there is something called earnings yield. Look at the company A. The current valuation is 10,000 crores. Whereas the earnings is only 1000 crores. Am I right? So the earnings yield is 10%. If I buy this company by paying 10,000 crores, this company making 1000 crores for me. So if I invest 100 crores, I will be getting 10 crores as my share. If I buy the shares by paying 100 rupees, I can expect a 10 rupees as earnings. So any amount I pay to buy the company as per the current market, I can expect a 10% returns. Needless to be distributed in form of dividend, but that's the current behavior of the company. So in long run, that's the realistic yield I can expect. So now I think that if I put my money into the bank, I'm getting a yield of 4%, 6%. If I put it on bonds, like 8%, 9%. So if I put it in equities, I may want at least 14%, 15%. So I may look up the yields accordingly. But of course, this is not a benchmark because this is the earnings of the last years. 
but definitely as an investors and market may have some expectations accordingly the pe may be high but it get justified by considering the growth so i'll come back to the growth bit later but by looking at this three company you can see that the 500 crores is what it makes but if i pay 6000 crores that's nothing but 8% right 500 divided by 6000 and if you look at the company c its yield is 11% because the pe ratio so lower the pe ratio higher the yield is this is what you need to understand but if you see the company PE ratio is high, indirectly you are getting compromised for the low PE. So in stock market, if the PEs are high and if a company is not even growing and justifying it, then the investors are not getting justified for the investment they've done in the business. Try to understand it. So the yield need to be in check. So you cannot have primarily a PE ratios uh, expanding on a permanent basis so p ratios can actually range within a band it can't be uh you know very high for a very long time and if it happens to be then this investor who's buying at the market price may not be justified by the returns of the company so we need to keep the p ratios always in check this is what it this yield is actually conveying it i hope you understand it if not kindly rewind it and get it back so i move on to explain the next factor the p ratio says the lower the p ratio attractive it is and the yield concept says that the p ratio cannot be unrealistic at a higher band for a long time and so you we cannot assume that the p ratio continue to expand so that is what we need to keep it in our mind i'll come back to the next concept and we will be connecting the yield concept towards the conclusion that's a primary aspect of the video so now let's go to uh, the next interesting slide that first have a look at the company a alone if you look at the company a 10 years before the earnings was 100 crores and today year 2020 let's say and earnings is 1500 crores so what happened the yearly earnings have increased by 500 crores in 10 years and if you look at the market capitalization 10 years before it was fetching 10000 crores basically it was priced as 10x whereas if it is earning 1500 crores now then naturally it deserves 15000 crores because the pe ratio is at 10x but look at the company b the 10 years before earnings was 1000 crores and it was fetching 10000 crores the market cap it was 10e so on these grounds both are actually same but today when you look at year 2020 if you look at 2020 the earnings is 1500 crores even company a even in company b the earnings is but if you look at the current market capitalization it was fetching only 15000 crores because it's 10x but now the company B is actually fetching 30,000 crores. Look at this company B 10 years before when it was making 1,000 crores, people were happy to pay 10,000 crores. But now, if it is making 1,500 crores, then the people should be happy to pay ideally 15,000 crores. But it is now quoting at 30,000 crores. So now we need to understand what is the reason for it having a high market cap that is not justified by looking at its earnings growth but this has happened because of the p expansion try to understand the company market cap company market cap can grow for out of two reasons number one the the fundamental earnings of the companies have increased so the market cap can go up or there's another factor or and it can be or or and the second factor is the PE ratio, sometime back people are actually conservative, the people are willing to pay only 10%. But for some reason, now the public is willing to pay more to buy the company. If the PE is more, although the earnings are same, I'm willing to pay you more to buy it. Maybe for any reason, sometime the market expectations are high. Sometime we call this as overvaluation. If the share price is going up, it doesn't mean always fair. If it is backed by earnings, it is very well justified. But if it is earnings is pretty much uh, growing up but the expansion was highly due to the market cap i mean the p expansion then it needs to be in check i hope you understand the concept so there are the two reasons why the market cap is going up am i right one the company earnings is actually improved so naturally people willing to pay instead of 1000 crores if 1500 crores people should be willing to pay 15000 crores but if people are actually paying 15000 crores the entire growth was justified by the earnings by any chance if it is actually improved by 20000 crores then it is actually because of p expansion okay so that remaining 5000 crores is a you know we can't expect that to happen another round going forward that's the interesting aspect of it. so how do we use this video concept to find a stock 
So this is a multi-bagger framework and uh, there are a lot of framework which can help you to find a multi-bagger stock and this is a very classic framework, okay. We can give you a little exercise now because it's already stretched by explaining this concept, uh, length, pretty much lengthy video, but we can definitely post another video by filling this particular grid. But now, as of now, I can give you a little exercise that you can actually go and do it right away and put your comments in the comment section. Based on your interest, we will soon come up with a, um, with a list of the companies along with this particular grid. So I'll tell you what is the simple task. Okay, so we we sometime back we have seen that we are concerned about the company's market, uh, you know, uh, capitalization is going because of the earnings growth in the company. Otherwise, the valuation is actually expanding. So what you need to do is look at this. This is a company. This is a grid. This is a grid should contain a company whereas the earnings growth is actually low. I mean. The, the company growth rate, the profitability growth rate was not great, but the valuation is also not so great. In that case, it is fair because if a company is not doing well on their fundamentals, market may not like it. On that ground, this is a company must be at a mature or declining stage and this is a company we wish to avoid. But you want to know what are the companies, am I right? What are the companies? That is what precisely in the next video we're going to post it. But for you, what I recommend is, what you guys can actually do is in order to find the you know the earnings growth in the low what you need to do is take maybe 100 companies take maybe 100 companies maybe you can use the screener.in website and what you guys can do, do is look at a 10 years before profit and today's profit and look at the growth rate look at the growth rate of those 100 companies okay you can do that in excel sheet if you prefer otherwise in other programming language but make sure that you get a 10 years prior growth rate or today's growth rate and of course you can find the the differences and rank them and rank them and if you find the bottom 20 that these companies are actually not grown in fact some company may be degrowth some companies are actually scoring at the lower so it is more like a percentile you are looking at the bottom grid so that shows a low grid Am I right? But that's not enough to be because if it is a low, then it is earnings growth is low. It can be even here or it can even be here. Am I right? Because this the entire line, the entire line is earnings growth low. But next, what you need to do is by any chance, if the growth rate is exceptionally good, the last 10 years, the company earnings becomes multifolded. Make sure that you doesn't take a company which is through seasonal or base effect. But even now, 10 years before 2012, is is fairly good base is not a problem but of course uh, you know it's it's good to try that okay and the next one is valuation so what you need to do is you need to look at the 10 years before pe of the company and what are the current pe of the company and you need to know whether the pe is expanded or not so on that grounds you need to rank them so let's say 10 years before the pe is 10 now the pe is 10 10 years before this is maybe a company a okay and the company b maybe 10 years before it's 5 now it's about 20 the other company may be 30 now it's about 70 so we need to understand the valuation the p re rating this is no rating but it is 4x it is actually 2.5x so we need to rank them which companies have expanded the pe's on this ground we need to calculate it and if it is the bottom 20 p re rating or a top 20 p rating we have to make it so if you look at this company the earnings growth is so low but the valuation so this company market cap went up not because of earnings not because of earnings but because of pe expansion this is the company very risky maybe it is a trending lot of people talk about it lot of people go mad by buying the shares thinking that it can actually uh, repeat the wonder what it did in last 10 years but very risky because the earn the investors gets uh, investor cannot have that realistic expectation because the yield gets further lower then this is a stock anytime can crash. It's a stock we need to sell if you have it in your portfolio. Better to avoid if you see anything like this. Otherwise, sell if you have anything in your portfolio. And But you need to know how. So that's why I've already told you how to find the valuations. Like that is 10 years before PE, what is the current PE? And then you need to rank it. And we will be doing it. And we will be posting it in the upcoming videos. But why not we can actually uh, give a chance for all of you to try and uh, in the upcoming video otherwise soon you can find the comment section we will be dropping the link as well for you to find the upcoming videos as well and look at this is where the very interesting aspect the earnings growth is exceptionally good so there are top 20 earnings growth the company had a fantastic earnings growth but the valuation is actually low this is something which is very interesting although the company went on very good but make sure that it is not uh you know uh, uh 
uh, less i know we want last time 10x means even 10x that's good but if it is a negative pe -E rating okay then the it shows that the public expectation is slightly low okay this is something which is uh, most likely the uh, uh, the company would have become last time multi bagger i think last term these stocks may be multi bagger and these stocks may be justified by the earnings as well but very difficult to anticipate such going forward because last time the earnings also went up and their pe rating is also expanded so these companies would have given multi folded returns definitely but the point is these companies to replicate another round is difficult so if you have the share this is a share is also a kind of profit booking provided you see the yield becomes unjustifyingly low but this is the company we need to immediately consider in buying or even in this case there is something in between that there is a moderate valuation the pe is a 1 or 1.5 x whereas the most of the growth was accompanied by the earnings the most of the market cap expansion happened in the earnings but the valuation should be low to moderate that's fine so this is the grid we need to actually capture so what are the stocks falls in this grid this quadrant will be posted in the upcoming video so stay tuned i hope you enjoyed this whole video and if it's worth watching this minute and every minute if you find it worth definitely express your comments in the below section and uh, do remember we also have a much detailed training program on fundamental analysis so if you are definitely interested go and check out our website which is eqsis.com and there you find a training program underneath you see a fundamental training program and there you will experience a very interesting concepts but it's going to be a one full day program it's available through online as well as classroom so make sure that you check out on our website as well thank you here it's i'm signing off but make sure that stay tuned for the next video as well because we may post you the name of the company along with the excel sheets as well thank you